with Maxon completing its acquisition of Pixiologic ZBrush in January 2022, this is the first official tease and sneak peek of features coming to ZBrush, which is pretty strange owing to the fact that the previously known Pixiologic ZBrush makes announcements twice or three times a year. As part of updates, Maxon has announced that ZBrush 2022.0.6, which is the current release of ZBrush, will be the final free update for perpetual license holders, bringing most of our fears to light as we initially mentioned during the acquisition process of late last year and early this year, the Maxon will strip perpetual license holders the added free ZBrush update after the first year of acquisition. And this means that going forward, ZBrush users will now have to pay for features and this is going to be strange for long-term users including myself. ZBrush 2023 is teased to be coming with an overhauled remesher, which is now shipping with a new caching system. This makes it the first time ZBrush will be generating caching for a remeshing model, although this promises to save time for subsequent remeshing operation as the initial cache simply loads the memory and this works even way better with a brand new retry button which exists within the same environment of the Z remesher. This in turn gives users a flexible way of remeshing and with the retry button users can repeat a remeshing operation on the main model but in this case with new remeshing setting. This is going to be great for achieving various remeshing results over and over without the need to undo and redo just to get different results. Z remesher now supports the Preserve Poly Paint which is ZBrush Vertus Color Painting tool and this in turn means that users can make paintings on their main model without bothering about repainting or transferring the painting to a retoppled mesh. And in one simple sentence, what this simply means is you can now easily remesh while working with ZBrush with a brand new caching system and there is now little to no need of projection painting when trying to transfer high dense model details in terms of textures to your low poly meshes. ZBrush 2023 is also coming with a new set of masking options, the mask region and auto region selection. These features are coming and they are very intelligent ways for artists to mask their models, with artists only needing to make close outlines and with the mask region option, border regions can automatically get filled. And with the auto region masking, ZBrush automatically analyzes and fuse contagious region between masks. This works great with intersecting or nested shapes. Even more interesting, ZBrush has an analyze button that also would be shipping with ZBrush 2023. This takes a look at the alpha mask and with a couple of pointers from the user, the new auto mask can also dictate and select specific regions of the masking and this in itself would save artists a whole lot of time especially when dealing with alphas and trying to mask a certain set of regions. Shown in the separate beta build of ZBrush 2023, Redshift is now integrated into ZBrush. This has to be one of the most important benefits users have been looking forward to since the Maxon ZBrush acquisition. The integration of Redshift now brings about improved render qualities as ZBrush has officially discontinued the use of Keyshot Bridge moving on. And the integration of Redshift brings about a lot of features that it currently supports that traditional users would definitely want. And most of the things that we get to see are also things that we would definitely want to see Redshift achieve in ZBrush and some of the notable ones include the subsurface scattering, metallic, shadow catching, texture baking, depth of field, HDRI rendering, refraction, post-process BPR render filters and so on. Additionally, Redshift materials are now integrated into ZBrush with parameters being available via the default material selections. Artists can also choose to work with their favorite matte caps or preferred ZBrush materials on their model. Something that is also pretty interesting is with the materials that are now integrated into ZBrush from Redshift, this can be applied to 3D models and also be used. It's also worth mentioning that there's a couple of discrepancies for those who would stick to the maximum one subscription and those who will just get the ZBrush by default in the coming days. First off, CPU rendering is only going to be available to default ZBrush users and if you would like to get the GPU accelerated rendering, then you need to be part of the maximum one subscription. Of course, this is sort of bittersweet owing to the fact that lots of people would prefer to just have a tool and use it for work rather than subscribing to it, but this is a brand new regime and this is as good as it gets. Amongst these three tools that we've just mentioned, there is also an additional sub-tool button that is now coming to ZBrush. This is called the Apply Last Action to Sub-Tool. This is a great repeat task button that allows users to actually repeat something across an entire sub-tool. For example, selecting multiple meshes and applying a certain material to them, instead of switching from one poly to the other and doing these things one after the other, which would be definitely time consuming, with this brand new tool, you can simply apply that to one and then select the rest of the models and apply across. In fact, this is even way better when applying this to a folder. 
So once you select the simple subtool and you give it a setting material, all of the subtools within the folder can now benefit from the apply last action to subtool once you click on the gear icon that exists within the folder. And for setting repeated tasks, this is a wonderful improvement and I'm personally excited about it. And the folks at Max on ZBrush are promising that more and more features will be coming in the next release of ZBrush, which is ZBrush 2023. So this is more like it. I personally would say that all of these are nice improvements coming to ZBrush. The only thing which I'm just unsure about is the set of features that will be coming. I mean, if the features coming to ZBrush are only limited to these three or four that we've just talked about, then I wouldn't suggest that it is the best thing to do to spend hundreds of dollars switching to a new set of ZBrush where you can actually have a workaround for some of these things. But by all means, if more and more features will be coming to ZBrush, I would definitely want to switch over to that and start working with the brand new version, which will be released pretty soon. So tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, then you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.